Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I will show you how to diagnose and replace a blown fuse in a multimeter. Here at Science Buddies, we have a lot of science projects where students need to use a multimeter, and one of the most common problems we encounter is that students will connect things incorrectly, accidentally blow the fuse, then always have their multimeter read zero when they try to take a measurement and not understand why. So in this video, I will walk you through that process and explain how you can replace the fuse. First, let's talk about how you usually blow the fuse to begin with. So here I have a multimeter set to measure voltage. If you don't know what that means, you might want to check out our general how to use a multimeter tutorial linked in the description of this video. Here I also have a 9 volt battery. And when I have my multimeter set to measure voltage, it is perfectly safe to take the multimeter probes and connect them directly to the terminals of the battery. And you'll see in this case, I read a little over nine volts for a fresh nine volt battery. That is perfectly fine. It will not damage the multimeter. The problem arises when you have your multimeter set to measure current, especially the lower current settings in the micro or milliamp range that you see over here on the right side of the dial. And you have the red pl probe plugged into the port labeled V for volts, omega for ohms, and milliamp for milliamps. That is a small amount of current. And as you may be able to see on the label here, that port has a 500 milliamp fuse, meaning if more than 500 milliamps of current flows through this port, it will blow that fuse. Now, the multimeter does have a separate port with a 10 amp maximum. So if you're measuring something like a motor that uses a lot of current, then you can go up to there and you can measure much more current safely. But what happens a lot of the time is students are using the port with that lower current fuse in there, and then if you do something like connect the probes of your multimeter directly to a battery when you are set to measure current, a lot of current's going to th flow through the multimeter because you are effectively short-circuiting the battery. That is going to blow the fuse, and your multimeter screen is then just going to read zero when you try to measure current. And to demonstrate this, I have two multimeters here, one with a blown fuse and one without. I have connected them to the 9 volt battery now with a 1 kilo ohm resistor in series with the circuit, so this should limit the amount of current, and I should measure some small amount of current that is not zero. But you see, with the multimeter with the damaged fuse here, I am still measuring zero milliamps, but if I switch my probes over to the multimeter that does not have a damaged fuse, plug these in here, and you'll see I measure about 9 milliamps of current. So this is what you would expect with a working meter, but note that there is another reason you can get zero if you have an open circuit somewhere where something is disconnected. So for example, if I disconnect one of my alligator clips from my resistor there, now I am also getting zero on my meter. So there are actually two different reasons you can get a zero reading. Just because you have a zero does not mean you have a blown fuse. It could also mean you have an open circuit or a disconnected wire at one or more points in your circuit. So don't jump right to replacing the fuse. First, you always wanna go through and make sure all your wires are connected. Circuits like this with alligator clips are also where you need to be careful about blowing the fuse. Even if you don't touch the multimeter probes directly to the battery, you could bump these exposed bits of metal on the different alligator clips together, and depending on where they connect, that could also cause a short, short circuit that can blow the fuse in the multimeter. So always be careful, keep these spaced apart, make sure you don't get short circuits by having these bumped together. So assuming you have diagnosed the blown fuse by double checking that you do not have an open circuit anywhere, now let's talk about how you replace it. So I'm going to switch my meter off, unplug the probes, and if you flip over on the back of your meter or you have your multimeters manual, it should tell you what type of fuse you need. So in this case, I have a 0.5 amp or 500 milliamp, 250 volt fuse that has a diameter of five millimeters and a length of 20 millimeters. So you may need to go buy an extra fuse. If your multimeter did not come with them, you can search online for those specs. And here I got a little box of about 20 replacement fuses for this meter. Depending on your multimeter, you will probably need a screwdriver to take off the back cover. So there are two small screws here that I can remove. Pop off the back cover. Look inside and you should be able to see the fuse. And if I pop this one out, just using my screwdriver, Look closely and you can see how that looks kind of blackened and charred because it burned out. I'm gonna hold up a new fuse here. You can see how this one is nice and clear. It doesn't have any burn marks. So I'm just gonna throw away the burned out one. Pop the new one back into that same spot. 
put the back cover back on, and that should be it. I will now test my meter. I should have a working fuse and should be able to take my current measurements. Retighten those screws, make sure the cover is not loose. I'm going to switch my meter back on, plug my probes back in, and again, for this circuit, I expect to be measuring about 9 milliamps. So, there we go. I have diagnosed and replaced the fuse in this multimeter. My meter is now working again. Again, you want to be careful not to make those mistakes about bumping things together or connecting the leads directly to the battery when you are set to measure current. But since these fuses come in bags of usually at least 10 or 20, you will have plenty of extras on hand if you do make that mistake and need to replace it again. For more electronics tutorials and science projects about electronics, including how to use a breadboard, which is very useful when you're getting started with electronics projects, check out the links in the description of this video. For thousands of other fun hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.